So today I've got two PS2 slimline models. I um, thought these were actually pretty cool. This is a Japanese version, which is uh, a white one. And then I have a well, European or PAL version, which is the black one. And this one is actually slightly different to the regular or the one you see more often. Um, I don't know if that shows up very well. There you go. This one is actually more uh, rectangular, so it has very square buttons. And if you compare it to the white one, it's all very, yeah, it's just slightly different. And I believe that's just the, the latest version they released. But nonetheless, I thought it was pretty cool. Didn't have this one, uh, hadn't seen this one yet. So, but thought I'd uh, really like to give this uh, a go. Now, both of these actually have a busted laser. Uh, they do read PlayStation 1 discs, so CD part of it is fine. Uh, they just don't read any DVDs anymore, so you can't actually play any PS2 games on that, which is a shame. So, I had actually ordered, um, let me get this out of the way for a moment. Uh, I have already in advance ordered a pair of new lenses. So I can get these out to show you. So these are the new lenses that I ordered up. So yeah, I'm going to open up. I'm going to start with the black one. I'm going to open that up and uh, we'll take it from there. So for the new lens, um, I just wanted to highlight this. Uh, they all come with a anti-static solder blob. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to take my flux pen and apply some flux there, then use some desolder braid and carefully get all that off. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera, but I'll show the result um, just because the angle of it you know, is really difficult. I'd need three hands. And as you can see, uh, if it focuses, the uh, cable the ribbon it's attached to is yeah, very delicate, so I don't want to risk burning it. Um, but I'll, I'll get that done and I'll show you what the uh, end result looks like. So I've got that done and like I said, uh, I wanted to show the results. And um, oh, where did I have that? Here we go. And try and zoom in for you. As you can see, that uh, solder blob, let me point that out, that was over here is now, if I can get the angle right, yeah, there you go. It's now three separate pads, um, and, and that's the result you're looking for. So uh, I'm going to continue disassembling the PS2 Slim, and I'll show you uh, when I've got that open. So this is the interior of the PS2. Um, it looks slightly different uh, layout wise actually versus uh, the other more regular, more common slimlines. Um, regardless, this is going to be rather easy. Uh, we're really interested in just this part. So um, I can actually lift the bracket out from the socket. I'm going to have to detach this ribbon cable, um, that one and the one underneath here and then I have full access to this, um, and that's gonna be the next step, so stay tuned. So that's the carriage out of the console now. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna take our screwdriver here, and we need to detach, uh, let me get the right size, it's this one. We need to detach this little uh, metal piece here that covers the rail, which basically guides this thing um, because we're going to need to put that onto the new lens because it well it doesn't come with that it's it's literally just the the metal part there so um, we're going to take out this screw make sure not to lose it put it here and this piece just lifts straight out now <coughs> As you can see, it's still held by the guide rod, so I do need my other screwdriver now, but I'm going to oh, try and remove these 
screws here are held in quite well and <laughs> to be honest I've quite worn out the screwdriver set here but like that um, and then need to get this one as well there we go so taking that one out and then uh, these plastic clips come off real easy and yeah that whole guide system basically comes out um, I'm going to want to take that and this is our old lens so grab our new one and we're going to make sure that we're putting it the right way so we're going to take the the rod push that through get it aligned Uh, that's not all the way in, so I'm going to line that up approximately and then we can take the, the clip, put that back on. also want to make sure that goes in there directly. There's, uh, let me show this. There's two little pins and they need to go into these outer holes here. Um, <laughs> it's a bit more difficult to do this on screen or on camera, but uh, yeah. Try and get this in for you. Almost. Here we go. A and then it's literally just reassembling it. So we're taking the screws again. That's one. We're taking this one. Get that in there. So it should now slide freely and it does. And uh, all that's left now is um, for this to line up again. Um, here we go. Grab our last screw and proper screwdriver. And we're all done. Um, now it's just reassembling it. Uh, I'm going to clean up the guide rails slightly more, um, add some extra lube on there so that it slides slightly better. But uh, yeah, I'll reassemble uh, the top piece and I'll hook it up to the TV and we'll see if it now reads any PS2 games again. So I've got that PS2 Slim hooked up to my new TV. Uh, put in a game and turn it on, see what happens. Let's hope it reads games this time. Well, it seems to boot. See if we can read the contents of the disc. And we're in. So that was a relatively painless and uh, easy replacement. Uh, I've got the other one, uh, the white, the Japanese PS2 Slim as well. I'm going to open that up and I'll show you some of the differences uh, internally. But the procedure is pretty much the same thing. Um, and I'll replace that one. We'll hook it up and see if that one works. I have disassembled the top part of the white Japanese PS2 Slim. Uh, I had a little 
check. So this is the SCPH 90,000 and this one is the 70,000. And as you can see, the internals are quite different. Um, the disk drive uh, is in the same position, but everything else looks different. So this model has a power plug coming in and does the conversion from AC to DC inside the machine itself. And this one uses a uh, external uh, power supply to get DC power in and do, uh, well, just have all the power in the socket on the board. Um, the location of the fan itself is different, or it's a different size fan, different style fan as well. Uh, there's more heating going on, that I can see, than on this end. And the motherboard itself, where in this one is literally covered like all the way across the bottom. So like all this is pretty much motherboard. In here, it's uh, just like a tiny slit here and this piece. So if you ever wanted to do a um, handheld PS2, this would be your best bet. But my information might be a bit outdated on this. If I recall correctly, free MacBoot doesn't work on the SCPH 90,000 and therefore you would need to have the disk drive built into this uh, in order to to do that but you know that's besides the topic here um, what I want to do is show you how to get the um, get the the disk the, the optic unit out from this model I showed it on the other one where it's literally a lift and then you've got the this this and you need to pry the uh, the ribbon cable here underneath the laser out and this one is actually I believe has an extra ribbon cable so let me get this more close up so you'd first have to undo these four screws then the optic part comes out there's a cable here that drives the motor shaft uh, there's another cable here, which is the ribbon that connects to the lens. And uh, oh, there's this ribbon, so that's three, um, that folds underneath this and drives the motor for the disc itself. Um, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to replace the lens. It's literally the exact same pr procedure as we've done in the previous one, so I won't bother recording that. The only difference is that the tabs here for the guide rod are not plastic, they're metal. Um, I had a quick look and yeah, doesn't seem to really matter which one you take out first, just uh, either that one or that one, just make sure that you replace it back properly. Uh, I'll replace, I'll swap the laser out and I'll run it back on the television and we'll see if this works. Got the PlayStation hooked up, so put a game in there, a Japanese game, I think it's Bleach and turn it on and we'll see what happens. The cable's not in there perfectly. Give me a bit of a green display, but regardless, it seems to be booting, whereas previously it wouldn't at all. It would just go straight to the menu. So, another PlayStation saved. Uh, like I said, the cable is a bit old, but it's a bit green. Don't mind that much for testing. This is perfect, it's exactly what we wanted. As I've shown, uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this and are able to do this yourselves now. Uh, replacing a laser on a PS2 Slim is really simple. Um, the lasers themselves, they're not that expensive either. I think I paid around seven euros shipped per lens. So that's two PS2s fully working again. Um, again, a small recap. So this was the slightly earlier 70,000 model. And here's the later, well, let me get that in focus, the later 90,000 model. And I showed this earlier, but in terms of visual 
it's slightly different. I kind of think it's pretty cool. And it sort of reminds me of the PS4. It's pretty cool to have one. Uh, I hope you, you enjoyed this. Uh, I had quite a bit of fun working on these, seeing as PS2 was my uh, first real console I got uh, from saving up a lot of money for doing some, uh, some paper routes. Um, and uh, got some good memories back there. Uh, booting Final Fantasy X definitely got me in the mood for replaying that. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, if you liked it, please leave a comment, a like, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. And I'll, uh, I'm definitely reading all the comments, so I'll try and get a speedy reply back as well. Till next time.